Have you ever wondered how a woman ruled over an empire primarily dominated by men in 1478 BC? Delve into the enigma of Hatshepsut, a woman who defied norms and expectations to ascend the throne of ancient Egypt. Born into royalty, Hatshepsut was not a stranger to the intricacies of power. However, it was her audacious leap to become pharaoh that truly set her apart. In a society where men were the usual inheritors of the throne, Hatshepsut's rise to power was nothing short of extraordinary. It was a journey fraught with challenges, but one she navigated with remarkable skill and determination. From her early life as the daughter of King Thutmose I, to her role as regent for her young stepson and finally her ascension as pharaoh, Hatshepsut's story is a testament to the strength of her character, and when she ascended to the throne, Hatshepsut embarked on a reign that would leave an indelible mark on Egypt. Queen Hatshepsut didn't just rule. She transformed Egypt into a prosperous empire. And how did she do it? By focusing on economic prosperity, maintaining peace, and advancing architecture like no pharaoh before her. Under her reign, Egypt saw an economic boom like never before. Hatshepsut developed a robust trade network that spanned from the land of Punt, known for its wealth in gold, ebony and exotic animals, to the far reaches of the Mediterranean. She understood that a flourishing economy was not built on war spoils alone, but on sustainable trade relations. This shift from a war-centric to a trade-centric economy helped Egypt amass wealth and usher in an era of prosperity. But prosperity was not just about wealth. Hatshepsut knew that a prosperous society was a peaceful one. She maintained a peaceful reign, focusing her efforts on internal affairs and diplomacy, instead of expanding the empire through conquest. This focus on peace allowed the people of Egypt to thrive, and the empire to become a beacon of stability in a turbulent world. Yet, it was in the realm of architecture that Hatshepsut truly left her mark. She commissioned hundreds of construction projects throughout Egypt, from monumental obelisks at the Temple of Karnak to her masterpiece, the Mortuary Temple at Deir el-Bahari. These projects not only showcased Egypt's wealth and power but also provided employment to thousands, further fueling the economy. Hatshepsut's reign was not without military successes. She led successful campaigns in Nubia and Canaan, adding to the wealth and prestige of her kingdom. However, it was her focus on economic and architectural growth that set her apart. Hatshepsut was a visionary, a leader who saw beyond the immediate and invested in the future. She understood that true prosperity lay not in the spoils of war, but in the fruits of peace, trade and innovation. Yet her most famous legacy isn't a war victory or a trade route, but a construction project of unparalleled beauty. Tucked into the cliffs of Deir el-Bari lies Queen Hatshepsut's greatest legacy, her mortuary temple. This colossal structure truly captures the grandeur of Hatshepsut's reign and is a testament to her ambition and vision. The mortuary temple of Queen Hatshepsut, often referred to as Jesser Jesseru, meaning Holy of Holies, is a marvel of ancient architecture. It's a unique blend of tradition and innovation, with a design that was unprecedented in its time. The temple is divided into three terraces, each adorned with colonnades of square pillars. These terraces are connected by ramps that were once graced by lush gardens. Now, you may wonder, why build a temple into a cliff? The location was no mere accident. The temple was strategically positioned in the cliffs of Deir el-Bari, a site with great historical and religious significance for the ancient Egyptians. This location was chosen to align with the sacred mountain of Thebes, believed to be the primeval mound where creation began. But this temple was more than a monument to Hatshepsut's reign. It was a place of worship, a sacred space dedicated to the gods. Primarily it was dedicated to Amun, a major deity in the Egyptian pantheon. Hatshepsut's temple was designed to serve as a stage for the beautiful festival of the valley, an annual event where the statues of Amun, Mut and Khonsu, were carried from Karnak to visit the necropolis on the West Bank. Jezer Jeseru was also Hatshepsut's final resting place. Upon her death, she was believed to have become one with Amun, and the temple was a symbolic representation of this divine union. It was a place where the living could pay homage to their departed queen and the gods she was now a part of. In its grand design, symbolic location and sacred purpose, the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut is a monument that speaks volumes about the queen's aspirations her spiritual beliefs, and her desire for eternal remembrance. But why would a queen build such an impressive temple you might ask? That's a story for another scene. The temple served more than just a monument to Queen Hatshepsut's reign, it was a bridge to the divine. 
In the ancient world, the line between the human and the divine was often blurry, and in the case of the mortuary temple of Queen Hatshepsut, this was no exception. The temple stood not only as a testament to the queen's reign, but also as a spiritual link between the earthly realm and that of the gods. Central to this divine connection was the god Amun, often referred to as the king of the gods. The temple's design and location were meticulously chosen to align with the sacred precinct of Amun at Karnak, a site of immense religious significance. This alignment was no mere coincidence but a deliberate act to forge a tangible link between Hatshepsut and the mighty Amun. The temple was also a stage for religious rituals and ceremonies. Priests and priestesses would perform rites and offerings to both Hatshepsut and Amun, further reinforcing this divine association. Incense would fill the air, prayers would echo through the halls, and offerings of food, drink and precious items would be left in the inner sanctum of the temple. But the temple served another critical purpose in the queen's grand plan. It was here that she sought to cement her divine status through her deification. Deification, the process by which a mortal becomes a god, was a bold move even for a pharaoh. Yet Hatshepsut was no ordinary ruler. Through intricate reliefs and inscriptions she portrayed herself not just as a god's representative on earth but as a god herself, a direct child of Amun. In this way the mortuary temple of Queen Hatshepsut was not just a place of worship, but a carefully crafted piece of religious propaganda, designed to elevate the queen to the status of a deity. Yet, despite her achievements, Hatshepsut's reign and legacy faced an attempt of erasure. Following her death, Hatshepsut's name was mysteriously erased from many records. One of the most powerful women in ancient history, the queen who had once stood tall, was wiped away, her existence nearly lost to the sands of time. But why, and how? There are a couple of theories as to why this great queen's name was methodically chiseled away from temple walls and monuments. The most convincing theory revolves around her successor and stepson, Thutmose III. Thutmose III, who had been a child when Hatshepsut took the throne, eventually grew into a man of power and ambition. In the beginning he was co-regent with Hatshepsut but after her death, he became the sole ruler of Egypt. Some historians believe that Thutmose III, wanting to secure his own legacy, decided to erase Hatshepsut's reign from history. This didn't just involve deleting her name from the records, it was a systematic erasure that included defacing statues, smashing carvings, and even altering inscriptions. This was no easy feat. Hatshepsut's presence was deeply woven into the fabric of Egypt's historical narrative, and it would have taken significant effort to remove her. Yet, Thutmose III didn't erase all traces of Hatshepsut. Some statues were left untouched, and her name remained in certain records. This has led some to argue that Thutmose III might not have been motivated by spite or jealousy, but by a desire to maintain the traditional narrative of male succession in Egypt. Regardless of the reasons, the erasure of Hatshepsut was so thorough that her name was largely forgotten for thousands of years. It is only in recent times thanks to the dogged determination of modern archaeologists that Hatshepsut has been rediscovered and her story retold. These archaeologists, poring over ancient texts and piecing together fragmented artifacts, have painted a picture of a ruler who was both powerful and just. They have brought Hatshepsut's story back to life reminding us that history is not always written by the victors. However thanks to modern archaeology, we can piece together Hatshepsut's story and understand her significant impact. Despite attempts to erase her, Hatshepsut's legacy endures. Her reign, marked by prosperity and peace, was a golden era in ancient Egypt's history. She was not just a queen, she was a pharaoh, a ruler who defied societal norms and led her country with wisdom and strength. Her mortuary temple, a marvel of architecture and artistry, stands testament testament to her rule. It is more than just a monument, it is a historical document etched in stone, revealing insights about her reign and the society she governed. The temple's grandeur reflects Hatshepsut's ambition, her vision and her ability to command respect and obedience. The erasure of Hatshepsut from history was a desperate act of patriarchy, an attempt to suppress the memory of a successful female. But the truth has a way of surfacing. And Hatshepsut's story has emerged from the shadows, challenging our perceptions of gender and power in ancient civilizations. Through her temple, Hatshepsut proved that she was not just a queen, but a pharaoh whose reign profoundly shaped ancient Egypt. If you enjoyed learning about Hatshepsut and want to discover more fascinating historical figures, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also don't forget to check out the video description for a free audiobook about Hatshepsut.